Hi there. Thank you for joining me for the second session of the Medical Assessment of Impairment. My name is Roger Pillema. I'm an orthopaedic surgeon with a particular interest in impairment assessment. What I would like to do in these sessions is to give you some examples of the sorts of medical and impairment issues that we have been discussing at our regular meetings over the past 13 years or so. As mentioned previously, my intention is to present one session each month to be uploaded on the first Friday of the month. In this session, I would like to discuss a number of physical signs and measurements. These are the issues we will be discussing. Firstly, the medial hamstring reflex, anterior cruciate ligament laxity, flexion contracture and extension lag, Tonell sign in thoracic outlet syndrome, measurement of hind foot inversion and eversion, measurement of shortening, both true and apparent. Firstly then, the medial hamstring reflex. As discussed in the first session, the medial hamstring reflex is supplied by the L5 nerve root and as suggested, it is a very valuable sign in testing for L5 radiculopathy. I find this the best position for testing this reflex with the knee at slightly less than a right angle and the hip flexed, abducted and externally rotated. The examiner then strikes the fingers which are resting on the medial hamstring tendons as in testing the biceps reflex. I hope you are finding this test useful. Anterior cruciate laxity. The anterior draw test is the commonest test used for testing anterior cruciate laxity, although the Lachman test is more sensitive. As you would be aware, the described method for testing for this laxity is for the patient to be supine with hip flexion and the knee flexed to 90 degrees. The examiner then sits on the end of the examining couch, stabilizing the patient's foot with his or her thigh. One then grips the upper tibia with the thumbs around the tibial tuberosity and most important, with the examiner's index fingers firmly up against the hamstrings to make sure they are relaxed as possible. This often requires a lot of encouragement. The examiner then pulls forward trying to get the tibia to move forward in relation to the femur. Now this is something I found by chance. I had a patient in whom I was not really sure whether there was ACL laxity or not. After he was fully clothed, I decided to have another go. So I sat him down, put my shoe on his shoe, and did a sitting draw test. Laxity was now clearly present. Please try this. Uh, in the seated position, sit erect and feel the tension in your hamstring tendons. Now lean forward 30 degrees and you can feel that the tension increases. Sit erect and you can feel it loosens and most importantly, lean back and you can see it loosens even more. So sit right forward, a lot of tension in the hamstrings, more relaxed, even more relaxed. Now, why does this happen? Well, when you're in this position, the only thing stopping you from falling backwards is the contraction of your hip flexors, the psoas tendons. Now, when the psoas tendons contract, the antagonistic muscles, that is the hip extensors, that is, the hamstrings relax. So when the hip flexors contract, the hamstrings relax. Physiology 101. In my opinion then, when one examines the patient in the standard supine position, with the hip flexed and the knee at the right angle, no matter how hard you try and get the patient to relax, there is always some residual tone in the hamstrings. The best position then is with the patient seated, leaning slightly backwards to get maximum relaxation of the hamstrings. Flexion contracture and extension lag. This is from table 1735 of AMA5, the knee replacement table. As noted, there is a distinction drawn between flexion contracture and extension lag. How does one tell the difference clinically? The patient is asked to elevate the leg with the following result. Now, if there is any quadriceps weakness or lengthening, the patient is unable to actively fully extend the knee because of loss of power, that is, extension lag. On the other hand, if there is tightness of the posterior capsule, for example, then there is a mechanical block to extension, that is, flexion contracture. Remember, flexion contracture actually means loss of full extension. If the examiner passively attempts to extend the knee and it does extend, this is extension lag. 
If the knee fails to extend passively, that is flexion contracture. Question, is it possible to have a flexion contracture and an extension lag in the same patient? Think about it and we will discuss this in the next session.